So you're listening to The Film Show on Hospital Radio Medway with uh, Liam and Beth. And now for a voice that you haven't heard before, um, but we know the guy from years back. Uh, we've worked with him before and we think you probably will hear his name at some point in the future. It's director, writer, producer, all-round um, film guy. It's Steve Gallagher. Hello. How are we? How are you doing? Yeah, very well, thank you. Just uh, chilling with a, with a nice coffee this morning. Good. Oh, that sounds amazing. We've got we've got ourselves a little uh, chocolate chip brioche bun. Uh, we have, yeah. So uh, we we see your coffee and we raise you. <laughs> raise raise me uh, a chocolate chip. Uh, I'm like, <laughs> it's, a, it's an oat milk coffee as well. And I, mean, I am that person now. So oat milk. Yeah. Oh, I'm Steve, more... what are you doing to yourself? Well, you know, saving the planet. Apparently, pretending to be. <laughs> Fair dues. Yeah. Um, okay, um, on to what we actually are getting you on the show for and waking you up for this morning. Um, yeah. You've got a new film out at the moment. It's a short film called Unexpected Item. It is indeed, yes. Um, so, why don't you tell us what it's about? Uh, it's a romantic comedy um, centering around a man getting dating advice from a self-service checkout, um, which my good friend and mentor came up with, um, Chris Croucher his little um, idea and um, basically we, he just found the idea of self-service checkouts talking back to him rather hilarious and as we're all aware of it, it it does become that way when you're in a supermarket and we found a way of creating a little quite funny quite sweet romantic comedy around it yeah and I I like the film Beth thoughts yeah I really liked it actually yeah oh, <laughs> I was thank you very much. pleasantly surprised yeah <laughs> It's one of those things like, like short films don't get a lot of attention, do they? But no. um, sometimes uh, an idea just just suits being done in the short film. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people. It's it's um, it's such a unique medium, and a, you know, it's a good way of creating and and showing your work without having to try and force the funding for a feature. But it also helps try and get funding for feature films and for future projects and things like that. So. Mm. We were very lucky with the people that got behind it, and it works as such a great um, film in that format and as a short, which is it's fantastic. Um, and, yeah, it, it's a very difficult market to kind of sell or to get people to back for funding because, you know, there's, there's limited to how much returns you're going to get and, and things like that. So we were very lucky that we got some really great people that wanted to help us with it, and, um, and it worked out really well. We were just so lucky on every aspect of of, of making a film from getting the location that we did I don't think I'm allowed to say where we got it um, but we were very lucky we got a purpose built set um, and the talent that we got behind it was incredible um, so we were yeah just lucky all around the crew was amazing all professionals in the industry who just wanted to come on board and help us out which was great I think you are really underselling the cast. I mean, you've got <laughs> Jamie Blackley, who's a, a definite rising star. Um, but surely in a few months' time, you're also going to be able to put Academy Award nominated Olivia Coleman on your poster as well. I mean, I feel like in a few uh, months' time, I'll be able to put Academy Award winning Olivia Coleman because... <laughs> That's a bold claim. I could. Um, I, I love college pieces. She is brilliant. Um, I've just finished working with her on the house that I NDA says I can't talk about just yet but it's going to be fantastic uh, returning series that she's in um, but not the other series that she's in at the minute Um, but yeah she's just brilliant and just a dream and we were so lucky to get her on board Um, it actually came through my producer who worked with her on the favourite and they got on very well and just asked her and she was like yeah, I can do, can do an hour's ADR thing. Yeah, fine. And um, yeah, she did. Came down to Soho. We uh, recorded the ADR in, um, in um, one of the Soho edit tweaks. God, this is really bad. Uh, in Boom, actually. Um, they were brilliant. They were really helpful. And she came in and just smashed it. You know, I think we were in there for 45 minutes and she just smashed it completely. True it professional. Quite, yeah, so professional. So wonderful. And yeah, like you say, the, the rest of the cast, Jamie is brilliant. He's just fantastic and a really lovely guy. Izzy as well is just phenomenal. Um, we loved getting Izzy in. She was just beautiful and fantastic. And just her face is just perfect for the whole thing. 
Um, in fact, I was working with both Jamie and Izzy on Slaughterhouse Rules coming out 31st of this month. Mm. Everybody go and see it. Um, you do know we're gonna we're gonna definitely taking a soundbite from that where you, you say Izzy's face is just perfect and we're creating a whole lot of rumours. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, she, she was just absolutely you know fantastic and and they were both brilliant. I was working with both of them on Slothouse and uh, we were having so much fun working on that that I said you know I'm making this I'm making this short that uh, can I poach you both from Crispin and everybody once this is done and come and shoot this little thing with me and they were both fantastic and they were both on our list from our um, casting director so that was great and obviously Andrew Ellis who's just phenomenal as well and so funny and such a joy just to have around on set he was just hilarious the whole time all the little um, announcements we actually had quite a few of those uh, uh Hanoi announcements, mm. and um, some of them were a little bit more less um, less PG than the ones that we put in. Um, so we we picked out the most family friendly ones. But he came up with all of those on his own, and his delivery for all of them was just great as well. So mm. we were very lucky lucky to have who we had. Yeah, yeah, and I think the, the film as a whole really came together really well, and it's amazing how much chemistry you you managed to build between uh, Jamie and, and Izzy's characters, considering they they didn't talk at all. Um, but I think Beth and I have slightly mixed feelings about the ending because I thought it ended at just the right time, um, but yeah. you wanted to see more, didn't you, Beth? Yeah, I thought it was quite an abrupt ending, and I wanted I wanted it to go a bit further. But... That's fair. Um, I mean, it is one of those. Yeah, we kind of wanted to. We wanted to leave it slightly ambiguous. I mean, I did come up with an alternate ending for a little bit more 2018 where he gets taken out by the security guards for being a bit creepy, um, <laughs> which, which was a very hashtag me too kind of um, more up-to-date ending. But we, we wanted to see the charm in it. We wanted a, a new, you know, a, a, a short film that you constantly go to festivals and, and you see a lot of short films and they're all very bleak, and especially in Britain, there's a lot of very bleak films and stuff. So we wanted something happy, and you know we're we live in such a kind of dark time that it's like let's just make something happy and joyful and very sweet. And yeah, we wanted that kind of just sweet, happy. Will something happen? Won't it happen? You know, mm-hmm. ending. So yeah, well, yeah. It, just that. It was it was nice, and I guess the whole aim of it is it it did leave you wanting more, and that's why I was so frustrated with it because I wanted to know what happened next. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I, that's the romantic comedy I actually want to make. It's like you start it at the point of that first kiss, and then you just see it sort of materialise into a very very plain relationship where they just go through the normal struggles of life. I think that that for me would be a very fun romantic comedy to see. You know. Because everybody, romantic comedies always end with like, oh, they get together, you see them kiss. Nobody ever does the romantic comedy where it's like, oh, they sit at home on the sofa and watch Netflix. Mm. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, yeah. and, and have to go grocery shopping and yeah. all of that stuff. It's like, oh, isn't it perfect? They're going to have this beautiful life. And it's like, <laughs> So that's the romantic comedy I want to see. I want to see, uh, yeah, it'll probably just turn into that um, Leonardo DiCaprio, Kate Winslet film. Titanic, the other one. I um, mean, if that's you saying you want to get Leo and Kate on board, <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're free. I don't know. What it's <laughs> um, okay, well, busy, yeah. we're, we're gonna we'll chat about unexpected times a little bit more uh, after the next song. But um, there's no point in getting a guest on the show if we're not going to get them to do some of our job for us. Um, and we've asked you to pick a few films and a few songs from those films that you really like. So uh, why don't you introduce the first one for us? Uh, this one is Echo and the Bunny Men, uh, The Killing Moon from Donnie Darko, which was um, one of my favourite films growing up. Still have no idea what's going on with it or <laughs> what it's about, and I think nobody else does, not even the director, but, I, you know, it's beautiful and it's just such a fantastic sort of Lynchian and craziness and fun film, and it's just got such an incredible soundtrack, and it's one of my favourite songs from it. So, Echo and the Buddy Man, Killing Moon. You're listening to The Film Show and we've still got with us uh, director and writer and producer Steve Gallagher um, who has his new film Unexpected Item currently touring the short film circuit. Hello. Hello, Steve. How are you doing? I am. (laughs) Um, So Unexpected Item, uh, doing very well, uh, winning a few awards. Uh, Tell us about uh, the journey to date. Yeah, so we've been, uh, again, we've done pretty well. I think we're in 
eight, maybe nine festivals now. Um, very lucky that we got into Austin Comedy Shorts Festival and we got nominated for an award there. I've uh, gone into a few other ones. We've won three three awards there. I've been nominated for quite a few others. We were in Portobello, which is where we um, where we premiered the film. I was lucky enough to actually have three films in that festival, which was really lovely. And our next big one, uh, we've got two screenings coming up. Uh, one on the 20th of October down in Falmer in Cornwall. Nice. And then at some point in November or early December, we're going to be at the Manchester Kino Festival, which should be a lot of fun because they're, um, they're doing really great. Uh, you know, it's the 15th annual festival. Mm. They've also put the reason we're playing in Falmouth is because they are putting us on there as well. So that's quite exciting. So, yeah, we're doing pretty well. We've screened in Italy, America, uh, soon to be Australia. I think I can say that because it's not been released yet, but we will be doing Um and all around Europe and, and England. So we've we've been very, very lucky with where we've been screened. So it's getting out there and it's good. Awesome. Um, we've been just getting some incredible feedback from not only festivals but industry industry people as well who are who have seen it, who have watched it and yeah. Mm. There's some really cool people that have given us some uh, fantastic feedback but and I guess my card mentioned, unfortunately. <laughs> of course, yeah. Um, but I, it kind of leads on to what I was going to uh, really ask you about, because we can name a whole load of short film festivals here, there and everywhere, um, but the average person who goes to the cinema doesn't really care, uh, for want of a better word. Yeah, um, so, yeah no, exactly. Like, so, so what, like, why? Why why go through that process? Because it's pretty gruelling, isn't it? It is, and it's horrendous, and it can be so... Um, what's the right word um, it, yeah it can get you down quite a lot and, mm. and when you're going through this process you just think why am I bothering like you know I've just spent all this time all this money all this effort in getting it into you know trying to get it into festivals and you're struggling and you're struggling to find an audience and you think oh, god you know this, this isn't any good it's like getting into festivals and everything else and then you know you patch it around a few of the people that you work with who are you know, relatively big names and things like that and they're watching it and saying it's fantastic and not just to be nice but genuine and you're like okay so we do have something mm. um, but with film festivals the, the thing is if you want to become a director and uh, you know fulfill that kind of goal which is which is my end goal is you've got to find your way in and there's very very few ways of becoming a director um, I've I'm doing it going down the AD route and, um, Mm. you know, making films on the side. Uh, Other people go and make promos. They go and do, you know, working in commercial companies and in-house and start to get a little promo work and stuff like that. So, yeah, for me, making short films is the best way of practicing my skills, honing my skills uh, and getting my work out there and, and hopefully getting people to notice it and start to want to go, all right, we'll give you a shot at making a feature um yeah which is which is exciting you know so that that's why i do it and it is disheartening and it is tough and um it's it's quite a quite a slog but you know it, when it pays off and you start getting into festivals you you start to feel good about it and realize that you know your film is all right and you know three award wins and several nominations you start to think okay maybe maybe it's not not a terrible movie maybe, maybe i did do something right you know mm. And maybe a few years down the line, you'll join Olivia and you'll you'll be Academy Award nominated. Well, hopefully Academy Award winning Steve Gallagher. Well, you know, one one day perhaps we'll see what happens. But, <laughs> aim um, high. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, you, you got to aim, aim for the uh, aim for the stars, and if you know, if you hit the top of that tree and just get that, you know, back yeah. there, then you're like, well, you know, I didn't do too bad, did I? Yeah, of um, course. I mean, yeah. I'd love, I'd love to be in in that situation, um, but right now I'm just concentrating on on the next thing and and making sure it's a good film and yeah. and going from there. So, cool. Well, um, let's play another song and then we'll we'll catch up again uh, in a, in a couple of minutes. Uh, so, tell us your second song. Uh, this is from one of my favourite films of all time, if not my favourite film of all time, um, the beautiful Big Lebowski, and this is Credence Clearwater Revival and. Uh, Looking, um, looking, I don't know 
work. But um, <laughs> looking out my back door is that yeah, the one? That's the one. I've written it down as looking out of my back door, and I was looking at it going, "No, he's definitely looking out my back door." And I was like, "Why is that spelled wrong?" My blooming auto correct on my phone. But yes, uh, fantastic song by an incredible band uh, in one of my favorite films. I was going to do the Spanish version of Hotel California, but. Um, I just, I thought this was a much better choice. So, uh, yes, yeah, joy. Yeah. That was Looking Out My Back Door from The Big Lebowski, uh, as chosen by our guest, Steve Gallagher. Hello. Oh. And uh, just enough time to ask you what's what's next in the life of Steve. Yeah, so, um, unemployment at the minute. <laughs> That's what's next. Um, so I just finished the job last week, uh, which, I'm, um, which was just amazing and fantastic. Um, can't say yet i don't think that it's coming out again um but you will hear very soon um and i'm currently writing my next short film a couple of short films actually and a feature film and uh i've got a few other things in the pipeline i've just got myself a representation as an actor and sort of as a director which is quite exciting awesome um, um yeah so moving forward with that and going Going to the next festival is going to go to Kino Festival, which is where um, anybody who lives up in Manchester can come and see Unexpected Items. Please do. Um, when I know the dates, <laughs> actually tell you they haven't released the schedule yet. Um, but yeah, writing my next short film, which is a sort of a suspense thriller um, in in terms of uh, very similar to Rear Window Room and the documentary. The Wolf Pack, uh, which mm. I'm very excited about, which should be quite a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what's next. And also writing a feature film all about the fracking issues up in Lancashire, which is quite exciting as well. Because mm. That's a big, big and very personal topic. So that's what that's what's happening now. Awesome. Well, um, if you haven't heard the name of Steve Gallagher, hopefully after listening to us, you know of him and. Keep your ears out and your eyes out because I'm sure he's going to go on to bigger and better things in the future. Um, but do check out Unexpected Item uh, when you can at a festival yeah. near you. Um, do. Thank thanks you. for having us on the show, Steve. Oh, thanks thank you thanks for, for us having you on the show. <laughs> it's not your yeah. show. You're, you're getting as bad as me now. <laughs> it's catching. We're not the only ones in ourselves. <laughs> I, I'm really glad I'm producing radio these days. Right. Um, yes, but no, thank you very much for having me, man. It's fantastic to talk to you. Cheers, Steve. Speak to you later. No, see you soon. See you. Bye. bye.